Hello, folks. It's John Pollock alongside Jimmy Corderas. We're coming off the WWE's Night of Champions event from Sunday night in Houston, Texas at the Toyota Center. Uh, we're going to run through the uh, the card, our thoughts on the show. I guess going into this show, Jimmy, it was, it was, I guess, an interesting card on paper, a number of interesting questions. I thought Raw last Monday night did a pretty good job of just about every program advancing it a step forward where you were more interested. I really liked what they did last Monday with Sting, where they finally, we got away from the statue and, and it was more, this guy's going after his first WWE title, which to me, that's the that's the money story of Sting going after this this title. That was the exactly. hook for me. Yeah, exactly. And it was the, it was the whole story of, uh, it is the one title in his career that has eluded him the whole time and and going on and you know working off that storyline but you know a lot of people said well wow, you should have saved sting for the pay-per-view and not put him on tv early i i don't i'm okay with it i mean like everybody's over analyzing everything nowadays just you know relax i i like the fact that it was big show because it was a safe choice for him they're comfortable with each other they've worked in the past obviously we've seen it before on in wcw years ago but Again, a safe choice to have Sting in the ring with someone and then trans transfer it into a tag match, which kind of made sense because you have him and Cena, the two guys were facing Rollins against Big Show and Rollins. And the goal of that match, which I think they accomplished, was getting the Scorpion Deathlock over as this deadly submission and Rollins. You know, all these people were complaining about, oh, why is he tapping like that? Yeah, he's getting the challenger over for the main event at the pay-per-view. And I, that was done perfect. I thought that the mission accomplished. You now have a submission that everyone buys because Rollins, who, let's go back, doesn't exactly uh, tap out furiously to every submission he's in. He made this death lock feel like a death lock, and yeah. it was great. I uh, thought that part was really absolutely. hit home very hard. Yeah. Uh, so that takes us into uh, the main event. Let's start off. Um, we'll, we'll work our way backwards. Let's start with uh, with Seth Rollins and Sting. In particular, Sting's performance. The guy, 56 years old, looked in great shape on Sunday night. I thought worked his ass off, and we can get into the injury afterwards, but just in terms of Sting's performance, uh, I thought this guy more than held up his end uh, with one of the best guys in the business right now in Seth Rollins. Right, and and it, again, a good choice to have Seth Rollins versus Sting in, in one of his main matches coming back uh, to the WWE after WrestleMania. Sting looked really good, and one of the things that's hard to do, um, there's a different kind of cardio there's a different kind of being in shape when you wrestle mm -hmm. as opposed to playing football playing soccer playing hockey it's a different kind of cardio altogether and anybody who's been in the ring for any length of time can tell you that the best way to get in ring shape is to have ring time along with your cardio you know it helps uh, one helps the other immensely and for a guy who is 56 years old who hasn't wrestled regularly for I don't know how long, I thought he was fantastic. Now, the injury we're speaking about, he had taken, he he took a lot in this particular mm -hmm. match. Uh, it was a buckle bomb, which looked to be um, the blow that led to Sting just kind of collapsing in the middle of the ring. It was clearly not a part of the match. They got the camera off of Sting. There was a long delay. The trainer came in to make sure he was okay. And then rather quickly, they transitioned and went to the finish shortly thereafter. But afterwards, uh, Dave Meltzer was on the law stating it appears to be a neck injury and maybe a significant one. We don't have any update beyond that at this point but um, a scary moment whenever you're talking about a neck especially a, a 56 year old and you look at what he did in this match Jimmy and it mm -hmm. was to me the most concerning spot I, I mean if I was going to pinpoint where a guy might get injured when you look at the layout of this match it was that plunge he took off the announce desk going through the Spanish table mm -hmm. where the monitors were left there which to me it just seems like someone messed that up like that it's just protocol. You always move the monitors to avoid any significant damage. And he could have narrowly cracked his head on one of those monitors the way he went through it. Very easily. Um, you know, and like you said, that's been the protocol for a long time now is to clear off the announce table before anybody goes through it. Just it's a precautionary measure and it makes total sense. And it doesn't take away from anything. because no. just, Somebody's going through the table. That could have been the, the moment where um, maybe something got, got tweaked there. But uh, taking two buckle bombs, you know, especially I was at first I wasn't sure if it was uh, just him getting winded because, you know, obviously when you hit the buckle like that, you know, air leaves your body and tends sometimes not to want to come back. So I was hoping that it was something as simple as him getting winded and just couldn't get his air right away. 
Um, I hope it's nothing too, too serious. Uh, it, but, you know, and, and you hate to put it this way, but those are the inherent risks of, of when you elevate uh, the style that uh, some of these young guys are, are taking. When you, the, the risk level increases and maybe sometimes you just got to tone things down a little bit, especially when you got a guy like Sting in the ring. Yeah, sometimes, I, I, you know, I give him, like you said, I give him a lot of credit for doing what he did. But at the same time, you got to be safe. Yeah, and I think that, you know, this audience base, I mean, you're exposed to so much professional wrestling and guys constantly topping each other where mm -hmm. it's it's the most innovative spots you can come up with. It's a very athletic style. And sometimes you have to kind of harness your expectations when we're talking about someone who's 56 or The Undertaker is held to this gigantic standard every right. time that he's got to achieve towards. And that's something that... I mean, you look at that, a guy that's 56, that's wor and in very good shape, but working a main event style match with the Seth Rollins and following what him and John Cena had just done. There's that inherent pressure that you have to top what the audience has just seen. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, something it, you, you run in the risk factor and stuff. Right. Problems are, are going to have are going to happen. But um Afterwards, then, we saw Sheamus tease the cash-in, and that led to the return of Kane, who thwarted the cash-in attempt, and it appears that the next title program will be Seth Rollins and Kane uh, going into Hell in a Cell next month. Yeah, you know what? And I don't have a problem with it because here's another established legend, veteran, whatever, that Seth Rollins could, you know, squeeze by, get by, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it, it, I think it works, and it makes sense in storyline-wise because Seth Rollins was a guy who damaged Kane's ankle, I, I don't have a problem with it. I like the fact that it's a return of the old demon cane as opposed to the corporate slacks wearing cane. But, you know, again, people are going to come, well, you know, the same old guy being trotted out. Well, you know what? To, to build Seth Rollins, he has to have cr credible wins over credible guys. And, and Kane is a former world champion. Why not? Where, where do you think this ultimately goes with Sheamus? Do you anticipate this being a successful cash-in by the time we, we get to it? Um... Chances are it will be because I know a lot of people are high on Sheamus. And you know what? He's he's a great heel. And if you're going to end up turning Seth Rollins in the process, you need someone who's going to get booed badly. And Sheamus will definitely get booed. It appears that, you know, Triple H and Seth Rollins is ultimately a match they will eventually get to. I mean, the mm -hmm. seeds have been planted uh, rather explicitly that this mm -hmm. is a program to get to. And if the if it's going to be Seth Rollins as a babyface, you could certainly segue over and make Sheamus that new heel that Hunter is backing. I mean, that's mm -hmm. certainly a way that, that you could get there. I think Seth Rollins is a really great heel, but there is certainly a babyface run in him. And you watch him in the ring. Right. It, it, he's. I mean, the guys are so spectacular, it, it becomes difficult to, to necessarily hate this guy once the bell rings. The, the audience loves it. He does spectacular stuff inside of the ring. Mm -hmm. that's, see, that's the big challenge with, with heels nowadays is, again, toning down the spectacular stuff because, like, you know, you say, uh, if I'm supposed to hate this guy and he does something great, how do you say, oh, I don't like that, but wow, that looked really good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard. The balance. Uh, uh, preceding the WWE title match was the U.S. title match. It was Seth Rollins uh, losing to John Cena. So John Cena regaining the United States title. And I don't think this was quite the level of the SummerSlam match, but still a very good match between yep. the two who have very good chemistry together. And clean finish. There was no shenanigans at the end. It was just a clean win by John Cena. Right. Um, I, Erasing the work done by John Stewart. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Which... I don't know, maybe a good thing. I don't know. I would have almost liked to prefer, because you talked about earlier about Monday night and, and Seth Rollins tapping out to the Scorpion Deathlock. I almost like would have liked that to play into this match where the finish would have been him tapping out to the STF in, a, in quicker fashion, almost like, wait, I've got the, the, the World Heavyweight Championship match coming up right after this. I don't want to like burn myself out going into that one. So you know what? I'm going to sacrifice the U.S. title to keep myself fresher for the world title match. Well, it was one of the things I thought that they would hit on more. And this kind of falls on the announcers, the idea that, okay, Rollins is going to lose to Cena, but then he's going to beat Sting. So you want to have Rollins, at least in some kind of, 
I guess you could have told the story a bit better in terms of Rollins going into this match. You know, they did have him take the AA from Cena after the match, but then that was largely just just moved over from uh, in the next match. I guess it's it's kind of the difficulty of presenting a heel doing this rather admirable feat of going to uh, two matches back to back here, and he does have to win the second match as opposed to the other way around. But I think we can both agree the U.S. title better suited on John Cena yep. rather than the double champion in Seth Rollins. And I think that it gives John Cena at least something now every single week on Raw, which that show, I think it can use a hook each week knowing that you're going to do that title challenge. But no specific person comes to mind, though, for a feud for Cena. Um, Well, I'm I'm thinking down the road a little bit as opposed to rushing into a real major program for John Cena right now. I like the idea of maybe bringing back the U.S. Open Challenge, bring guys in, and again, have John Cena make these guys look like a million bucks on TV and, and elevate these guys. Even in losing efforts, it does happen, folks. You can lose a match and still look good and be elevated by somebody. Is Heath Slater going to finally get a shot? I think, you know who I'm looking, I think, I think, I think it's going to be Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn is going to be the next almost Daniel Bryan-esque type Mm-hmm. A guy that John Cena helps put over, maybe with a U.S. title when He's the guy who comes back from the injury, defeats John Cena. He's not going to do any cheering on his way to the ring. He's going to keep his arms low. He, yeah, he's no. going to do this a lot. Yeah, that's just, it. Just, very, just very stationary this, yeah, audience yeah, interaction yeah, or by or Sami Zayn. Just do the S.D. Jones, this thing right here. But the, yeah, I I like that. And then you almost have a built-in rivalry. rivalry. Oh, oh, my God. Barbara <laughs> Walters is in the booth. Um, <laughs> You almost have a built-in rivalry with him and, and uh, Kevin Owens if Kevin Owens is the Intercontinental Champion and Sami Zayn the United States Champion. You can have champion versus champion matches if the route they may want to go down the road, which has been talked about unifying the two titles. That may be the way to do it. Well, I have a wild card idea, and I'll talk about it coming out of this next match. We had the, the six-man tag where we had the Wyatt family taking on Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and mystery partner Chris Jericho. Did you like the selection of going the Jericho route? Yeah, I mean, a little bit of a surprise for me, but I didn't mind it. I mean— you, Who did you think going in it might— I thought might, it was going to be Kane. I yeah. did think, uh, yeah, monster mask wearing Kane. I thought he was going to—the mm-hmm. return of the monster versus another monster to help get the new monster over— But it still worked with Chris Jericho being the guy to get the new monster over. I thought the story was nice where them, uh, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, trying to get uh, Braun Strowman off his feet. Yep. You know, the story of them trying to get him off his feet and finally accomplishing that. uh, Maybe a little too much. He bumped a little too much, I thought. Maybe the, maybe uh, in, in the words of the great Kali, maybe one bump, you know, (laughs) would have sufficed for the big guy, you know, the spear. Yeah. Maybe that would have been good. And then Jericho tags himself in. Uh, but I think the the mission was accomplished in getting Braun Strowman over. He seems to be, uh, I mean, this was really a, a big message that they are going full f- Full throttle with, with Braun Strowman. And the way this ended uh, with with Strowman submitting Chris Jericho, heels get the victory. And you imagine that Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt, they are going to st- still stay tied together coming out of this show. They did the tease with Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose, so I could imagine them maybe petering off together. Mm-hmm. And that leaves Braun Strowman. And, you know, just looking at the track record of some of the guys that John Cena has been uh, thrown to, the monster of the month, great mm-hmm. Kali included, mm-hmm. I don't think it's out of the question that we have no challengers for John Cena and Braun Strowman becomes Cena's quick opponent for Hell in a Cell. I think that's that's a, a far out there prediction, but I just can't come up with an opponent for John Cena unless they just come up with someone and shoot the angle for there isn't that obvious pick and right. Braun Strowman they are they are building him up big for something yeah that's true they, 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 he appears to be well you know I wouldn't say the rocket is strapped to him but big things no, I, they were I mean going over like that on Jericho and the way that they have protected that finish as right. silly looking as it, as it is sometimes by yeah. Braun Strowman yeah they're going complete with him yeah um, I just I, I don't know the value in putting him against John Cena so soon especially after Cena no, maybe I, I, he wins I, Jimmy what maybe he wins yeah but you know if that works and people say oh well that's too soon for Braun Strowman and uh, John Cena will get his win back there'll be complaints all over the map uh, either way uh, definitely detrimental if Cena was to beat him mm-hmm. which which won't be I, I don't think the guy's anywhere close 
for a singles feud by no. any stretch. I think it would be a bad idea. I think this guy should be hidden in six yes. mans. It's his best course of action at this mm-hmm. point. It's just a lack of ideas that are coming out. You look at who was put over the strongest on the heel side. Braun Strowman's right up there coming out of the show sure. on Sunday. Sure. Uh, anyway, so that continues. I guess, where do you feel this goes with Jericho? I mean, he is doing that network special in a few weeks, so mm-hmm. made sense to reintroduce him on, on television. That's coming up in two weeks. Uh, but almost like the, the subtle heel tease with Dean Ambrose. Yeah, that, that seems to be the direction. I, I think you're right. Dean Ambrose and and Chris Jericho seems to be the direction they're going in. And why not? Jericho comes back every once in a while and puts people over. Whoa, what a concept where a veteran comes back to put people over. Kind of like Sting did in the main event. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. It, what fresh new ideas. I like this. Uh, Charlotte wins the Divas title, finally defeats Nikki Bella. I thought the two had a very good match. Mm-hmm. Uh, my only complaint was just about Nikki took this entire match, and it was just like the comeback was non-existent. It's just, boom, we go right to the finish. I just thought it was almost jarring the way it just shifted so quickly. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, Tater hit the spear, got the figure eight, and it was clean win. Listen, I thought they had a very good match on Raw, and they had a very good match on Sunday. And credit to both of them in yes. that case. Charlotte's selling, I think, on both shows was very good. I think it's the best attribute she has is some of her selling and just yelling in agony throughout that match with her knee. And Nikki did her part as well. So I didn't have really too many complaints. Yeah, as far as the selling goes, I don't think the apple fell far from the tree on that one. You know, you talk about the screaming in agony. Yeah. You remember back to the old Ric Flair matches and his screaming when he's been put in the figure four, or he's been in a submission hole. Ah, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, like she, she's like definitely a chip off the old block. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I don't want to crack on Ric Flair for crying at the end. Wow. It was, it was Niagara Falls and yeah, you knew it would be. Yeah. It, that's, again, not a shocker. But anyways. It was, like you said, a good match, and and I I feel sorry for Nikki Bella because she gets a lot of backlash, unwarranted, I think, because she works very hard. She has improved tremendously from when she first started escorting people down to the ring as a, uh, you know, when the guest hosts were coming out on Raw and her and her sister would, like, bookend them down to the ring. She's, she's she's improved a lot. Uh, You're never going to confuse her with with Sasha Banks at the upper echelon. However, she ain't even Marie either. I mean, like... Give her some credit here, okay? She's, you know, more than passable. And doing a 13-minute pay-per-view match with no hiccups in it, I mean, credit to both of them in that match. she gets heat. That's the name of the game, getting heat, whether positive or negative, you get heat. Uh, Other highlights from the the show for you? I mean, in terms of uh, the Dudley Boys and New Day, kind of just a lateral event for them. I imagine Mm -hmm. this builds up for something, whether it's a tables match or other at Hell in a Cell. Rusev and Ziggler... Another kind of placeholder match where I just think that was, was okay. It just yeah, it, it was it, just this I was think the storyline is what's what's turning people off to this, not the actual performance in the ring from these two guys. Yeah, which I wonder how far like if Lana is in fact going to be gone for four months. Is this going to be where we stay for another four months waiting till Lana can come back? Like that's a lot of time yeah. for these two who have already had a lot of matches and. I thought they had a good match at SummerSlam, a match on Raw that just dragged forever, and this was kind of in the middle of those two. Yeah. So no, I agree. That's kind of where it was. I guess the big announcement coming out of Hell in a Cell was uh, the Go to Hell tour, which I could have sworn was uh, was Jimmy's interaction with some people on Twitter. Yeah. Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy's Go to Hell tour is ongoing, everybody, yeah. at, at Jimmy Corderas. It's, it's every Monday night. On my Twitter and uh, every month on pay per view. So, well, yeah. uh, we, we join were, me there. We were joking about it on, on on the lawn Sunday night. I mean, what an easy promotional campaign, Brocktober. That works for me. I mean, Brocktober, you got it, maybe maybe someone pitched that and Vince said go to hell, and they said, hey, uh, that's the one. Better, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I I just something just popped in my head. I, I, Big win by Kevin Owens. Oh, that's right. That's right. And and that ties into something that I thought was a theme throughout this show and screamed Arn Anderson was just isolating a body part and working it over. It was the knee of Charlotte. It was in it. it was uh, same with Ryback and the shoulder. I really like that. I think in this era where big matches mean we go do a million near falls. I very much enjoyed uh, pulling back and just working down a body part Mm -hmm. and 
I, I really, I like the Kevin Owens Ryback match. I thought this was one of the better Ryback matches I've seen in some time. And the right guy has that title. Yes. And I think you could get some mileage out of that feud. I really like the contrasting personalities of Owens uh, with Ryback. No, I agree. And here, here's the thing. It, it, in in the world of professional wrestling, we obviously know that it is sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. But the idea of a wrestling match is you want to win the match. And what better way to win the match than, like you said, going old school and isolating a body part and tearing somebody down and breaking them down. That's psychology. That's ring psychology. And that's where you have the story of the match going. The other thing I liked about the match was Kevin Owens, who, despite being cheered a lot in Houston were, and pretty much everywhere else he goes now, he, he technically is a heel. And the heel won using heel tactics by raking the eyes or or viciously raking the eyes because it looked like, he, you know, he did the old yep. really get And a great minute. replay. The referee, perfect position. Exactly. Uh, and Jimmy nodded his cap too. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. The, the thing that bothers me is because people say, well, since when is an, a, an eye rake a DQ? That has been that has been a rule that has been in place in the WWE for many years now that people don't know because they don't reference it on television. They have never told the fans that, hey, listen, uh, you know, a thumb to the eye or raking the eyes is an automatic DQ. Well, uh, you, it's never called as a DQ, so people are kind of desensitized to it. Exactly. Which I will say, even if you you look at that side of it, it's a dickhead move. Yes, it is. It's a dickhead move. Yeah. It's much like, you know, low blowing a guy when someone's not looking. It's, a, you know, that is kind of protected as a DQ. The eye rake is not. But you can at least appreciate, man, what a what a cheap, what a cheap shot. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and rolling him up from there. It's like, it's like, uh, I think it, because you talked about Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson, I remember years ago, you know, going back and uh, there was a match we were going over. And Arn said... They were try, trying to beat a dirty finish, and they, Arn said, why don't you just make the finish a kick in the nuts behind the referee's back? And, you know, the guys looked at each other like, who? Huh? <laughs> like, yeah, if you got kicked in the nuts for real, I don't think you'd be kicking out of anybody's pin attempt. You'd be, like, in severe pain. So it kind of made sense, does it not? Mm -hmm. it's, it's realistic. If people want real, there's your real. So 16 super kicks and kicking out is not real. As well, something we were talking about before the show, you, you put the title on Kevin Owens, and yes, the uh, you know the U.S. title has definitely been elevated this year. The IC title, I can't really say the same. It's kind of uh, they're definitely, I think, looking at their titles as m being more important at this point. Kevin Owens is also a guy we saw it in the Montreal market yeah. last week, and believe me, this Friday when the WWE is coming to Canada now, it's Kevin Owens that's doing the media run that is their Canadian star at mm -hmm. this point. So I feel that Kevin Owens. Uh, being from Canada is going to be a major asset for this particular individual because it's a country that has never, I I in the wake of retirements of Edge, of Christian, mm -hmm. we're, we're a generation removed from, from the hearts. Kevin Owens is that guy, which has always been a very strong market for the company that you can send out there, not only in English, but also in French. They've never True. had that that dual star at that level that Kevin Owens could be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and going back to the Intercontinental title picture, uh, here's an opportunity to elevate that title again. I mean, I know the plan was in place for Daniel Bryan to be mm -hmm. that guy and the unfortunate injury derailed that. Kevin Owens has the opportunity to be that guy to bring prominence back to a title by not losing non-title matches on TV or or whatever, if he were to, he lose should be the the anti Cena, where he will only defend that on pay per view. He fight. He, go. He's got every thirty days. Yeah, I'll do my exhibition matches, but yeah. the title you pay to see that, mm -hmm. whatever the price is in this day and age. I like. But, I like the exhibition. Match. And you even plant that idea where Cena goes back to the challenge, and Owens just explicitly says, "I am not." defending this every single week. You're not even feuding the two, but you're introducing these two diametrically opposed philosophies to the title mm -hmm. so that when you finally cross paths again, when people are ready for that match again, mm -hmm. you could do that unification and you're introducing the two polar opposites of how they have gone about as champions. I think that's one like that. path. Like watch yeah. watch Owens loses the title in a month, but let's, yeah, exactly. let's see where they go with this. Yeah. Let's be uh, optimistic here. Yes, yes. Uh, but we get back. The big announcement on the show, we, we got very much derailed there with yeah. Brocktober, yes. go to hell tour. <laughs> uh, we've got 
Uh, Lesnar appearing at the network special on October 3rd. He'll take on the big show. Uh, then he's going to do Steve Austin's podcast on October the 19th. And that goes into October 25th. Hell in a Cell with the rematch with The Undertaker. Yeah, it, very interesting that it's coming up in Hell in a Cell. Obviously, that's the name of the pay-per-view. So you got to have, you're probably going to have two cell matches. I'm, I'm assuming that... That'll main event. I hope they only go with one, to be you honest. So? Unless they have the right feud. What's the other feud? Like, Rollins and Kane doesn't really make sense in a cell. Uh, y- no, but at the same time, if they elevate things, they could. But, uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe having the one cell match, I always, making it special. Exactly. That's where I always find... I. I They've run into problems in the past where it's it's Hell in a Cell month, so we're going to put our main match in a Hell in a Cell. Mm. Taker and Lesnar, it's a match that has progressed where I think it, it necessitates that. I could also see them doing something where the the ref, they whether it's a guest referee, whether it's something to play off the SummerSlam finish so that mm-hmm. they uh, eradicate any controversy this time around. Because it feels like the third match, that should be it between these two. I don't see them squeezing a fourth one in, no. especially to WrestleMania, which everyone was assuming might be the end point for these two. No, uh, the, I, I can't see it going past Hell in a Cell. The only th- possible match you can do after this it, and that's and then you'd have to have kind of like a controversial screwy finish in a hell in a cell match which I, don't I don't think they see. should do that again coming no, after SummerSlam no th- this, this this should be a match that um, coming off SummerSlam's controversial finish where there has to be a winner and the only person who can you know end this match is the referee or something like that just to make it you know, whatever uh, just to reference that point that the timekeeper you know took it upon himself whatever which I, I still haven't wrapped my head around, but anyway. Uh, th- th- I know there's a lot of question marks going into this about The Undertaker's health, and is he ready for something like this? If he wasn't, or if he didn't feel he wasn't, he wouldn't be doing it. So I I, 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 I am assuming that The Undertaker will be ready to go, and it may be, you know, one of those matches where he takes a little bit of time off afterwards because it will take a toll on his body. Maybe they make Shawn Michaels the referee, Jimmy. And then Kane comes down, rips the door off to get revenge on Brock for breaking his ankle, and we recreate bad blood. Oh. <laughs> well, though, you know what? Though there... Sean's not going over in this match. Yeah, that's the only difference. But this it, time he's going to help Undertaker. Yeah, it's, it's that, it's that oh, what's old is new again. We talked about that. Yeah, it's been 18 years ago. Yeah, that's, that's far enough. Usually it's like six, seven years. They, they that's recycle. a lot of clicks on the network to go yeah. all the way back to 97. Exactly. Uh, Night of Champions, thumbs up, down, in the middle. Where were your thumbs on I, this I'm one? I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I didn't think there was anything bad on the pay-per-view. I mean, nothing was blow away great. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought Cena Rollins was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought, like you said, Sting exceeded expectations. I thought the other matches, you know, were okay, despite some of the storylines that, like Ziggler and whatever. And I thought, I thought, like you said, I, I thought Kevin Owens winning the Intercontinental Championship was the right move and Charlotte winning. Yeah, I, I thought a lot of good to take away from this show. And I like the the announcement of Taker Lesnar. You mm-hmm. go off the air, you know what the, it's a big match for Hell in a Cell yeah. and you have your, your direction set now for uh, October the 25th, which is when the WWE is back with their show from the Staples Center in LA. You can follow this man at Jimmy Corderas, <laughs> and he will go to town with you if you want to debate with the man. It is uh, down. prime stuff. <laughs> uh, we will be back Sunday night on The Law, midnight Eastern time on TSN Radio in Canada. Man, you can listen. Oh. It's, a, it's a tough one. Some love it. Some, some don't. It's well, a, some of us older. Well, you need to, uh, you can watch your Sunday night football game, and then you, you can uh, just seamlessly listen to some two-hour wrestling discussion. No, which is what I do. Yeah. Which is what I do. So you can be on Twitter as you're listening. You can be engaging the audience and then listening. So there you go. Maybe we'll, I can... we'll, we'll back up your, your opinions. Oh, okay, cool. All right, folks. For Jimmy Corderas, I am John Pollock, and we will speak with you next month ahead of Hell in a Cell.